After studying this module, we shall be able to understand the concept of public sector, appreciate the role of public sector in economic development of the nation in different economic systems, shift of role of public sector in economic development, analyze the change in the type of the forms of public sector undertakings in the pre and post reform period. In the year 1947, at the time of India's gaining independence, many problems were faced by the country that needed to be tackled in a planned and very systematic way. India, an agrarian economy, had a weak industrial base, low level of savings and investments, and near absence of infrastructural facilities. There were income inequalities, low level of employment opportunities, and lack of manpower in various fields of management. Therefore, a big push was required if the company wanted to speed up its economic growth and to maintain it in the long run. The basic motive of a private sector is to earn profit and not to render services to the society. Private sector in almost all the developing countries was engaged in the production of consumer goods. Moreover, in industries that require huge investments have long gestation periods wherein the return on capital is uncertain. Private sector was very reluctant to invest there. Therefore, in order to accelerate the pace of development, a developing economy cannot depend on private sector alone. It is for this very reason that the government intervened through the public sector enterprises. We shall first discuss the concept of public sector. Any commercial, business or industrial undertaking owned, managed and controlled by the central, state or local government with a view to maximize social welfare and uphold public interest is called public enterprises. Let us throw some light on the basic characteristics of public enterprises. These are first, the ownership, management and control of public sector enterprises rest in the hands of central state or local government. Second, the capital for public enterprises comes from the government funds and for these necessary provisions is required to be made in government budget. Third, the public sector enterprises are guided by the motive of social welfare and not by profit. For example, Indian Oil Corporation, a public sector enterprise, provides oil and gas at subsidized prices to the public. Fourth, the basic concentration of public sector enterprises is on providing public utility services like transport, electricity, telecommunications, etc. Fifth, public sector enterprises are forced to follow government rules and regulations and are required to observe excessive formalities in their operations. Public sector enterprises are entrusted with the task of both accelerating the economic development and realizing the social objectives of developing countries. In view of these, PSCs are expected to achieve a number of objectives which are first, economic growth and industrialization of the country, second, development of infrastructural facilities, third, generating resources for development by earning returns on investment, fourth, promotes equal distribution of income and wealth, fifth, 
creation of employment opportunities sixth promotion of balanced regional development seventh providing assistance in the development of small scale and ancillary industries eighth save and earn foreign exchange for the country we shall now study the role of public sector in economic development of the nation the performance of private sector units are judged by the yardstick of profit or loss as profit maximization is their sole aim but in case of public sector undertakings this yardstick fails the performance of public sector units are judged by the total additions they make to the flow of goods and services in the economy in low income countries during the initial phases of economic growth public sector units are preferred over the private sector units because of the role played by them the role played by the public sector in indian economy can be explained in the forthcoming points let's discuss these strong and viable industrial base the industrial base of the economy had been strengthened because of the due emphasis of the government on setting up of defense and industries of strategic importance such as iron steel heavy engineering machine tools and equipment etc these industries do not find favor from the private sector because of their low profitability in the short run moreover consumer goods industries cannot progress unless and until these industries are set up all this put emphasis on the public sector to build a strong industrial base developing industries that need huge investments in the initial phases of development private entrepreneurs were not in a position to invest in industries that calls for huge investments such as iron steel ship building hydroelectric power projects etc moreover it took a very long time to get approvals for the licensing policy of the government under such circumstances government undertook such projects in the private sector removal of regional disparities in the pre independence period the industrial progress of the country was limited to the port towns of mumbai kolkata and chennai while the other parts of the country lagged far behind the government paid attention to this problem and set up industries in a number of areas that were neglected by the private sector thus the establishment of public sector is used as a measure to remove the regional disparities in industrial development for example bilai steel plant roorkela steel plant durgapur steel plant bokaro steel plant all the four steel plants of public sector were set up in backward states check over concentration of economic power in a capitalist economy the inequalities of income and wealth increases as the economic power get increasingly concentrated in a few hands the expansion of public sector helps to reduce inequalities in the economy in a number of ways for instance first profits of public sector can be used for the welfare program of the poorer sections second wages given by public sector to the lower staff are better as compared to the private sector import substitution and export promotion several public sector undertakings such as hindustan steel limited hindustan machine tools limited bharat electronics limited 
state trade corporation metals and minerals trading corporations etc have played a very significant role in expanding the exports of the country bharat heavy electrical limited bharat electronics limited hindustan antibiotics limited indian oil corporation oil and natural gas commission etc in the public sector are of special importance in the import substitution of the country development of infrastructure in an underdeveloped country the basic condition for economic development is that the infrastructure should develop at a rapid rate after independence the private sector was weak both financially and technically to develop infrastructure and heavy industries immediately moreover the private sector neither had shown any inclination to develop it all these factors had made the government participation in industrialization essential the government expanded the rail air and sea and road transport system very much all these investments undertaken by the public sector helped the private sector also thus the public sector has enabled the economy to develop a strong infrastructure for the future economic growth promoting social objectives for promoting the social welfare of the community public sector enterprises are supposed to discharge certain social functions these social functions are performed by public sector enterprises in a number of ways like psus employs far greater number of employees than their counterparts in the private sector similarly oil companies of the public sector prices their products much lower than their counterparts in the private sector psus take their csr very seriously providing social goods generation and distribution of power water sewerage disposal etc are social goods and private entrepreneurs do not find any incentives in investing in these social goods in such cases government puts the responsibility to provide these social goods on the public sector of the economy controlling industries of strategic and national importance there are certain critical and strategic industries that have to be only in the public sector such a control over these industries will enable government to adopt and implement proper policies in order to assure faster economic growth in india the public sector enterprise are in command in almost all the strategic sectors of the economy such as coal iron steel electricity etc avoiding over exploitation of natural resources the basic aim of private sector is to earn maximum profit with a view to earn maximum profit these enterprises over exploit the natural resources even at the cost of the nation therefore the task of exploitation of perishable natural resources is entrusted to psus so that these resources are not totally exhausted we shall now throw some light on the shift of role of public sector in economic development after the independence there was a widespread belief that in order to accelerate the process of growth or to create an industrial base for sustained economic development of the country it is very necessary to increase the role of public sector enterprises the public sector had played a very strategic and dominant role in the development of india since the adoption of first industrial policy resolution 
of the year 1948. The Industrial Policy Resolution passed in 1948 assigned the exclusive monopoly of central government in the manufacture of arms and ammunition, the production and control of atomic energy, and the ownership and management of railway transport. Further, it was resolved that in six industries, namely coal, iron and steel, aircraft manufacture, shipbuilding, manufacture of telephone, telegraph and wireless operators, excluding radio receiving sets and mineral oils. The state would alone set up the new undertakings. The role of public sector enterprise had been further enlarged with introduction of industrial policy resolution passed in the year 1956. The public sector enterprises had been assigned the responsibility of all the industries of basic and strategic importance and the industries in the nature of public utility service. The era of development of public sector units started with the introduction of industrial policy resolution of 1948 and it took some shape with the end of second five-year plan in the year 1961. Since then, the public sector enterprises kept on growing with more and more investment in them by the government of India. The country had only five public sector units in the year 1951 with an investment of 29 crores and at the end of second five-year plan, that is in the year 1961, the number of these units increased up to 47 with a total investment of 950 crores. There was an increase in the numbers and the amount of investments in public sector enterprises till the year 1977. Nehru model of development was used by the government of India which advocates for mixed economy. In 1977, Gandhi model of development was opted which favoured encouragement to small-scale industries. The Gandhi model of development was used only for three years till 1980, but with change in government, the old Nehru model of development was opted. Nehru always advocated for development of heavy industries. Heavy industries would further enhance self-sufficiency, increase employment and reduce poverty. But the depleted official reserves, huge deficits in balance of payments and sharp decline in GDP growth demanded greater attention towards the economy. The cure to all these crises was economic reforms. The government of India wanted to reform the public sector of the country by its new economic policy on public sector. India's policy towards public sector enterprises had been completely changed with the introduction of new industrial policy of 1991. It was a sudden and radical paradigm shift as far as the role of public sector in development of India and its economy was concerned. The government of India wanted to reform the public sector of the country by its new economic policy on public sector. India's policy towards public sector enterprises had been completely changed with the introduction of new industrial policy of 1991. It was a sudden and radical paradigm shift as far as the role of sector, which was public sector in development of India and its economy was concerned. The popular Nehru model of development had been completely changed into a new era popularly called the liberalization era. In the Nehru model, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru 
opted for mixed economy where both public and private sector would perform their duties but certainly a bigger role has been assigned to the public sector in fact at that time the private sector was incapable of handling big affairs only the public sector was capable of handling investments that were of long gestation period in order to make a self reliant nation nehru assigned the responsibility of handling the large industrial sector to the public sector only the small industrial sector and the daily need community items were assigned to the private sector nehru was not against the private sector the role of public sector units had been redefined in 1991 it was not supposed to play a passive role but to actively involve and compete in the market with other private sector firms in the same field four major measures were taken to reform the public sector unit these are first industries reserved for public sector had been reduced from 17 to 8 and still further to 3 second selected set of psus were disinvested in order to raise resources and to encourage wider participation of general public and workers in the ownership of the public enterprises third same policy for sick public sector enterprises had been followed as that for private enterprises fourth memorandum of understanding system was introduced thus a tremendous boost had been given to the private sector by the government of india in the post liberalization and reforms era the government of india opened up almost all the sectors of the economy to the private sector including the foreign private investments the rate of growth of private sector had further increased with the entry of multinational corporations now the government followed the policy of national common minimum program ncmp towards the public sector enterprises that includes first the successful profit making public enterprises are given full managerial and commercial autonomy second profit making psus will not be privatized third the government would make every step in order to modernize and restructure the sick public sector unit fourth loss making psus will either be sold off or closed fifth the revenue raised from privatization will be used for designated social sector schemes sixth in order to raise resources and to open new investment avenues to retail investors the public sector companies and nationalized banks will be encouraged to enter the capital markets seventh private industry will be inducted to turn around companies that have potential for revival thus the role of public sector in the economic development of the country had been changed gradually initially all the industries that are strategically important were assigned to public sector only with little importance to the private sector but with the introduction of industrial policy 1991 the public sector has been liberalized the public sector units have been privatized through disinvestments now the development of economy has been attributed not only to public sector but also to the private sector both the public and private sector 
are supposed to actively involve and compete in the market. We shall now discuss the change in type of forms of public enterprises depending upon the specific legal requirements and the conditions under which they were formed. The public sector units in India are managed in different ways which are first ministry an undertaking being managed by the whole ministry of the government comes under the category of ministry like Indian Railways. Ministry of Railways that are accountable to the parliament runs the railways in India. The Ministry of Railways has a budget of their own which is debated and approved by the parliament. Second, Departmental Undertakings in India, the public sector enterprises are run directly by the departments or executive agencies of the government of India. Like Security Press, Delhi Milk Scheme, Kohler Gold Mines, etc. These undertakings are directly subordinate to the ministry. Each departmental undertaking is self-contained and held responsible for its activities. Statutory corporations or public corporations. The organizations formed for a specific purpose and run by the statutory corporations come under the category of statutory corporations like Life Insurance Corporation of India, Indian Airlines, SEBI, Food Corporation of India, etc. Fourth, companies. These are enterprises run by the government as companies preferably for commercial and industrial activities. These companies are registered in accordance with the Indian Companies Act 1956. Here, at least 50% of the capital is owned by the government. Hindustan Machine Tools Limited NTPC Limited, etc., are examples of companies. Fifth, central boards. These boards are set up jointly by the central and the concerned state governments. These central boards are charged with the responsibility of handling big projects that involve huge investments. Such boards are common for river valley projects like. Bhakra Nangal, Hirkud, and Nagarjun Sagar. Now, a similar board is working towards cleaning the Ganga River. In the new industrial policy 1991, the four measures were taken by the government to reform the public sector enterprises. These are first, the number of industries reserved for public sector has been reduced from 17 to 8, later on still reduced to further 3 and the policy of selective competition in the reserved area was introduced. Now, only 3 industries are there that are exclusively reserved for public sector. These industries include atomic energy, minerals specified in the schedule to the atomic energy, Control of Production and Use Order, 1953, and Rail Transport. Second, in order to raise resources and to motivate general public and workers in ownership of public sector unit, a selected set of PSUs had been disinvested. Disinvestment was the main route adopted for the purpose of privatization which involves the sale of public sector equity to the private sector and the public at large. Third, same policy for sick public sector enterprises had been introduced as that for the public sector. As a result, the public sector enterprises were also brought under the jurisdiction of the Board for Industrial and Financial Reconstruction. Now, the responsibility to decide whether a sick public sector enterprise is required to be restructured or whether it has to be closed down 
lies on BIFR. Fourth, all the public sector enterprises had been brought under the system of MOU, Memorandum of Understanding. Under this system, an arm's length relationship was maintained between the public sector unit and the administrative ministries. This system ensures operational autonomy. Now, the government has decided that all the central public sector enterprises, including risk and loss making and those under construction, will be covered under the system of Memorandum of Understanding. In order to accelerate the pace of economic development of a country, the government intervenes through the public sector enterprises. Any commercial business or industrial undertaking owned, managed and controlled by the central, state or local government with a view to maximize social welfare and uphold public interest is called public enterprises. Public sector enterprises are entrusted with the task of both accelerating the economic development and realizing the social objective of developing countries. The public sector enterprises had helped the Indian economy to build a strong and viable industrial base, to develop industries that need huge investments, to remove regional disparities in the nation, to check over the concentration of economic power to substitute imports and to promote exports, to develop infrastructure, to provide social goods, to control industries of strategic and national importance, and to avoid over-exploitation of natural resources. Public sector units contributed a lot in the development of the nation. There was a paradigm shift in the role of public sector enterprises. After independence, there was a widespread belief that in order to accelerate the process of growth, it is very essential to increase the role of public sector enterprises. The role of PSUs had been enlarged and PSUs had been assigned the responsibility of all the industries of basic and strategic importance. With the introduction of Industrial Policy 1991, the public sector had been liberalized. The Government of India opened up almost all the sectors of the economy to private sectors including the foreign private investments. There are different forms of public enterprises that include ministry, departmental undertakings, statutory corporations, companies and central boards.